Hey everyone, so in this video we just want to go over a little bit of review of the edit modes as well as some scroll modes, loop playback, and some other things that we use during playback. Also we'll talk about absolute and relative grid as well as snap to grid mode. Alright, let's get going. Alright, so let's have a look at some scroll modes for as we're listening to audio. So here we go. I'm going to go up to options and then edit window scrolling and I'm going to choose no scrolling first and you'll see what that one does not particularly useful but if we need something to stay put in the same view while things are playing back we may want this so here if I play just a little bit of this back I'm going to hit play here and watch what the window does when we get to the end It's gone, but our window has not updated. So that's no scrolling. So scroll modes number one, no scrolling, which means that there's no following of the window uh, during playback. And then you can choose after playback. So maybe we started listening back here and we stop it when we decide on a spot where we want to work on things. So here I go. Say there's something we want to fix maybe right here so I'm going to hit stop playback with the spacebar so we now have wherever it played to centered on the screen when we stop it so that's pretty straightforward right so after playback so wherever it plays to you hit stop and that's where the screen updates to next page this is the one I use the most so you say start in one spot and each time the cursor gets to the end of the screen, it just updates the page. So you'll notice this will now start at the left side. And we get a whole new page to watch go by. And then when it gets to the end, it'll create a new page. There we go. So that's what I use the most often. Actually, all the others are kind of annoying to me. And continuous is excellent if you want to feel seasick. So here we go. So everything just scrolls by. So supposedly this isn't so bad if we're a little bit farther out. So if your zoom level is way back, it's not as uncomfortable. You can just kind of watch it go by. But you also notice you get this big gray area here, which is, you get this big gray area here, which is still kind of annoying. So even when we're zoomed way out, continuous is never all that nice. So here I am. I'm going to start playback here and you'll see what happens. So whatever moment we're in in the music is centered on the screen at that second. And that's continuous. If you're up close, that one really makes you uncomfortable. There's just nothing your eye can really focus on if you're zoomed in. So that's scroll modes. Okay, next thing is looping playback. So there's a couple ways to enable this. So I'm going to make a quick selection, say bars 9 and 10. And I'm going to go ahead and go to options and then loop playback right here. So that is now checked. You'll notice in options there's now a check mark next to that guy. And there's also in the play button a little loopy kind of circular arrow meaning that it's going to loop playback. So I'm going to hit spacebar. So not a great section to loop. So one way that I can adjust that is to take this arrow here, and maybe I just want to hear one four bar phrase or so. Now this is going to work much nicer in grid because everything's in time. So if I adjust in grid, I'll get right to the edge of the bar. back in that spot and keep listening. You don't have to go to options to turn it on. You can actually do it right on the play button. If you right click, you will see loop in the drop down that comes from the play button. And then you can also choose a couple other things. And you can also control click it. And that will also give you loop playback. And then if you need to adjust it, you can adjust with the in and out points here in the timeline 
or you can just change your selection by holding down shift and clicking and that will adjust whichever edge you're closest to and then you'll get a larger area that loops. Okay, and a little bit of review of our edit modes. So we have four edit modes, shuffle, spot, slip, and grid, and we can change through those on the keyboard using the function keys. So that's F1 for shuffle, two for slip, three for spot, and four for grid. And if you hit F4 again, you'll get relative grid versus absolute grid, which just says grid. So grid and then relative grid, which we'll talk about in a sec. So let's start with shuffle. Uh, the way I usually do it, because I have to hold down a function key to get my functions to work, is option and then the regular numeric keys. Uh, so on the over the QWERTY keyboard, right? So option one, two, three, four, and then four again if you want relative. So those are really easy because you can do that just with your left hand, option, and then one, two, three, four. Just the regular numeric keys, not the numeric keypad but the regular numbers near tab and caps lock and all that good stuff. Okay, so shuffle mode is like a magnet. It will automatically snap to the nearest region. And actually it typically just goes to the tail of a particular region, right? I can't actually get it to snap to the front of one. It'll go to the tail of whatever region I drag it to. And then once it snaps to one of the regions, it actually will stay like a magnet connected and I can shuffle them. I can change the order of the clips by grabbing and clicking and dragging and things. I just undid, but I can click and drag and reorder, but I can't actually uh, get them to preserve this space. So once you move that this clip up against the next one, it's magnetically connected. They can't be separated again unless I undo what I did. Now if I cut and paste, so I'm gonna copy this clip and I'm gonna paste it right here. You'll notice that all the clips to the right of it will then adjust in time that amount of space, right? Which is great if it's a word that you're adding in between two other words, you want the conversation to shift down a little bit to make room for the new word. You don't need this typically with music because what you end up doing is if I add space here, I'm adding time and now everything else on that track is late, right? So. Typically, this works great with things that are not in time. If you delete a clip, all the tracks to the right will move to the left by the amount of time that you're using. So if I select something that takes up this much time and hit delete, all the clips to the right are gonna shift that amount to the left, all right? Which works great if you're deleting a word or something, that's perfect for spoken word. But I just pulled every bit of this Cajon track out of time by doing it in a, in a session that uses rhythm. Okay, finally, if I have some clips together, I can shuffle the order of them a little bit. That was hard to see. I can keep pulling one to the back of the line. And if I trim, watch what happens. So if I trim this clip here, they will all stay together and it will just shorten the clip. So these guys to the right are gonna jump in to fit what I trimmed. So if I shorten something, all, all the time on the right has just now moved to, the, moved to the left a little bit, the amount that I trimmed. If I trim from the front, the whole thing moves over so that that same start point is preserved. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to slip mode now, and let's see what happens if I move a clip. No reaction from the clips around it. Slip mode is totally freehand, and none of the other clips will adjust in time. It's just about moving one clip kind of freely. Now, if I move one clip on top of another, the clip that I'm moving will obscure the other track. It'll kind of take over and lay on top of the other clip there. So I'm gonna switch over to spot mode here. Okay, so in spot mode, it's about putting something at a very specific place in time or in a very specific bar and beat. So most likely it's for like a specific frame in a film or an ad or a movie or something. So if I take the grabber and try and move this by clicking and dragging, I immediately get the spot dialog. And with the grabber, it asks me where I want my start point moved or where I wanna have a sync point or where I want the end moved. So I can change any of these, say that I want it to be at, I don't know, 18 now and hit okay it is now at bar 18. There's that selection over there, now at 
bar 18 at the end. So I moved the end of the clip to bar 18 one and then whatever happened ahead of that. Now, if I do a click and drag again, that gives me the spot dialog again. If I want it start point to line up to 18, I just use the start field and hit OK. And now it's start point is at 18. So that spot, if you do it with trim, you can actually trim to a specific number. So here's the spot dialog that came up when I used the trim tool on that clip. And then I just get a start point and a duration. So how long do I want it? And of course I can change in any of these what I'm lining things up to. So do I want it lined up to a bar and a beat? Do I want minutes and seconds, time code, samples, etc.? I can move its start point for the trim as well. I'm trimming the front because that's what the tool was set to. And the start point is 16,931. Maybe I want it to be 16,2 instead. And so that should trim a little bit off the front. And there we go, now it starts at 16.2. Let's try the right side of it. So now what I get is an end point, and this time I want it to go to 16.3. And OK. And then it stretches out that clip. So specific numbers either being trimmed from the clip or moving the clip. So Spot doesn't do a whole lot else. It's not for clicking and dragging or doing things very visually. It's about specific points in time or specific bars and beats. Okay, so grid mode. So here's grid mode here, and you'll notice if I hold down and click on it, it says absolute grid, that's the standard grid. This current track here is on time, right? So this guy works in time. All right, so the time works, but notice that the actual edge of the clip is not exactly on a grid line. Right? So if my grid is at maybe a quarter note, I'll be able to see that the actual hit is hitting at the right point on the grid on the fourth beat here, but the actual clip start has a little silence ahead of it, right? So the way that grid and relative grid work are absolute grid puts the edge of the clip exactly on a grid line, which in this case will not help, right? Because we know our sound is starting after a little bit of silence and then hitting on the beat here. So if I try and move this guy right now, what it's gonna do is force this edge of the clip onto a grid line. Notice how it's snapping to each of those places, and you'll notice that puts it off time. Oh, that hurts, right? So what we really want in this case, and with most real audio you've recorded, you're gonna have a little bit of silence before the clip, and then maybe your track is lined up because everyone recorded to the click, but the actual edge of the clip is frequently not the thing that's on time. It's whatever first transient you have or whatever uh, specific rhythms you have inside of the clip. So what this does is this was recorded and it's on time, right? So if I use relative grid, that will preserve the amount of offset that this clip edge has and keep everything else in the right place. So watch, if I now move this guy in relative grid, it's keeping the clip offset just exactly the amount that it was offset before. So when I move this over a quarter note, all my hits inside there are actually still landing in the right places because the clip was on time in the first place. So it's, it's in a different point of the rhythm, but it's still on time. So if we have that guitar part in. So you can hear the pattern isn't quite working out very nicely, but so right, if it's right, right, it sits great. But if I move it over, at least the hits are still on the beat, right? They're still lining up. That's relative grid. So what it does is preserve the offset of your current clip when you move it around. Okay, final thing on our edit modes is snap to grid, the snap to grid option. And the way we get that is first clicking on the mode we want to edit in, but then we can also have kind of a dual effect, which is to keep my selections on the grid, even though I'm in say shuffle or slip or spot mode. So if I select right now, you can see it's kind of freehand. I can click in between the grid lines really easily. But if I want to make a selection that's right on the grid, I can, if I hold down shift, so I've already selected shuffle, 
I hold down shift and then click grid and you'll notice they both light up. So what this does is the regular operation is still in shuffle, but my selections are now lined up to my grid. So that can be helpful in certain contexts where you want your selections to still be constrained by what is probably the beats, right? Or by seconds or whatever your main time scale is set to. And so I can have slip, but my, I can hold down shift, click the grid, I get both. So snap to grid is now on. So I can select exactly one bar really easily because my selection is constrained to the grid, but then when it's time to actually move this guy, it moves in slip mode, right? Totally smooth movement. So that's kind of a nice combo mode, right? You can select with the grid staying on the beat or on whatever your main time scale is, and then combine it with the actions of one of the other modes. So that's kind of cool. All right, so that's it for this one. See you in the next one.